For years now, Lightroom and Photoshop have been the go-to tools for most photographers, but they can also be very complex and time-consuming to use. Now, what if I told you that Luminar Neo, who are the sponsor of today's video, just got a big update and became even better, basically allowing you to do very complicated edits with a single click. So in today's video, I want to share with you a few of Luminar's newest features and show you why I think Luminar Neo might actually be the best solution for a lot of photographers out there. Let's get into it. This here is a photo I shot recently on a trip in the Azores and unfortunately we weren't always so lucky with the weather as you can tell the water around this island looks pretty gray and dull and normally on a sunny day this water would actually have a nice and saturated blue color especially the lagoon here would just pop with color. Now watch what happens when I go into Luminar's new water enhancer tool here and then move the amount slider all the way to 100. So the AI engine basically detects what is water in the photo and then makes adjustments only to that area. And when I hover my mouse over the image, you can see the mask that Luminar has automatically created. Now, if you've ever masked out water like this in Lightroom or in Photoshop, you know how time consuming that can be. So this here is a really nice time saver. And I'm gonna show you another very important masking tool that has been added to Luminar in just a little bit. But first, let's try out the different sliders in the water enhancer tool. So blue will add more blue tones to the water and green will of course add more green tones to the water. And I'm just gonna look for a nice combination of these two to create more of a turquoise color. And then this original color slider here will determine how much of your original watercolor will be visible. So it's kind of like a blend or opacity slider. I'll also increase the brightness a little bit here and add a bit more contrast. Now, you might have noticed that the mask is not 100% perfect. It missed a few spots here and in some areas the mask is actually covering the rocks. So if I go to the refine area tool here, I can adjust the mask by drawing in the areas or by erasing certain areas. And that's looking really good now, so let's have a look at the before and after especially given the short amount of time it took me to get here. I'm just gonna do a few more adjustments to this image. First, I'm going to use the Enhance tool, which is just an absolutely magical tool. It somehow makes every image look better. And I'm also going to add a bit of the Mystical tool here. This just adds a slight glow to the highlights and softens the image a little bit. Let's have another look at the before and after. So that's a pretty solid edit for literally no effort at all. Now you might be thinking, well, you could also just play around with the blue and the cyan in the HSL tool to improve the color of the water. And yes, you're not entirely wrong there, but it wouldn't work if you have anything else in your shot besides the water that's also blue, like in this example here. I'll just go into the colors tool here and under HSL go to saturation. And watch what happens when I increase the saturation of the blues. So everything that is blue in the image gets more saturated. So not just the water, but also the sky here. Now let's see what happens when I use the water enhancer tool on this image. I'll just increase the amount. And see, it knows what is water in the image. Even though in this shot we have a very strong reflection of the sky, it can still make out that difference. Before we move on, I just quickly want to let you know that Skylum are offering my viewers a crazy 30% discount for a limited time only. You probably won't find this discount anywhere else, so if you want to start editing with Luminar Neo, check out the discount code and the link in the video description. Alright, this next image is another one of those scenarios where there is a lot of potential in a photo, but it's just a matter of getting it out. Now this is actually a focus stacked image, which again is something that is very easy to do in Luminar Neo. You simply select all the images of your focus stack and then drag them into the focus stacking tool here and hit stack. Luminar will then blend all these images together and create a TIFF file that is perfectly sharp from front to back. So now let's see what we can do with this image. I'm gonna start by increasing the exposure and then adding a bit of contrast, reducing the highlights a bit, and bring out some more detail in the shadows. And that will give me a good base to work with. Now you can tell that the sky in this image is a little bit dull. Although this was taken at sunset, it's really lacking those sunset colors. So let's have a look if we can fix that by using Luminar's new Twilight Enhancer tool. 
I'm gonna leave the preset at mauve and then just crank up that amount slider. And that has definitely brought life to my sunset sky here, but it's a little bit too much. So let's reduce that amount to maybe around 60. Now that looks very, very good and also very natural. Let's have a look at the other presets. So this is golden, blush, emerald, and blue. All right, I'm gonna stick with mauve and I'm also going to increase the exposure a bit to make the foreground less dark. Now you can also make further adjustments to the sky right here. And I think I might just warm it up a little bit more. And the dawn settings here, they change the sunset settings, I guess you could say, but I'm just gonna leave those as is. And in the scene settings, you can change everything but the sky. So for example, brighten up the foreground if I wanted to do that. But it also has this relight human slider, which I guess will mask out any people in your shot. Then there is water reflection where you can make adjustments to, well, the reflections in the water. And in mask refinement, you can adjust the sky if you need to do that or move the position of the horizon and fix things like that. But it did a perfect job in this image, so I don't need to do anything here. All right, so that already looks very good. I'm just going to tweak this photo a little bit more with the enhance AI tool that will just balance the exposure a little bit more. And I actually want to bring more attention to this cool rock in the foreground here. So I'm going to use Luminar's Relight AI tool for that. I'm going to increase the brightness near to about 70 and then change the depth. So I'm just going to move that all the way up to about 90. And that just makes that foreground pop really nicely. And last but not least, I'm going to tweak the colors a little bit more with one of my favorite tools in Luminar Neo, and that is the landscape tool. I'll increase the golden hour slider just a little bit, and that just gives that little bit of extra sunset pop. All right, now let's have a look at the before and after. Is that crazy or what? An edit like this would have taken me so much longer without having all of these tools in Luminar Neo. I'd have to do some of the masking manually and move around a lot more sliders. And I honestly don't even know if I would have been able to get these kinds of results. Now, I mentioned before that Luminar also added a very important masking tool, and I personally think that this is a huge game changer to the software. The thing I'm talking about is luminosity masking. Luminosity masks have been around for a while as third-party plugins for more advanced users of Photoshop. Well, now Luminar Neo have introduced a very easy to use luminosity masking feature inside any tool that's already using masking. And one of the ways I like to use luminosity masking is for color grading. For example, I really want to turn this image into a very moody edit. I've already desaturated the greens a bit, as you can see here, but I really want to get more of a moody, cool tone to this image. So I'm going to go into the develop tool to white balance and then slide the temperature over to the blue. Now you can see that this is affecting the entire image. And of course, I don't want that. So I'm going to go into the masking tools here and select luminosity. This black and white bar then appears. And if I move the side of this box towards the right, you can see that I'm starting to select only the highlights in my image. But right now you can see here, it's a little bit pixelated around the edges. So I'm going to click and drag this small arrow right here and drag that towards the left. And what that's going to do, it's going to feather the mask and make things a lot more gradual and smooth. And if I go back to my adjustments and show you a before and after, you can see that now the blue tone is only affecting the highlights and not the entire image. And I can also use this luminosity masking to add contrast to an image. But again, be very precise about where I want that contrast to be added. So let's go into the develop tool again, and this time into the curves tool. Let's make an S curve for some nice contrast. Again, it's affecting the entire image, and that's just a bit too much. So let's go into the masking and again, select luminosity. I want this contrast to mostly affect the shadows in my image. So I'm going to move the luminosity range towards the shadows like so. And again, I'll move this small arrow to feather the mask. Now let's have a look at the before and after. That's produced some really nice contrast to the image. And again, super easy to do. And just real quick, I want to clean up this image a bit because as you can see here, there's all these signs and there's two people at the bottom of the frame. So I'll just go to erase and then paint over the things I want to remove. And after I'm done, I'll just hit erase and they're gone. So another before and after of the entire edit. 
before and after. All right, so one last thing I want to show you that is again a huge time saver. Check this out. So here I have a bunch more shots from this recent trip to the Azores. And one thing I was dealing with a lot was high dynamic range scenes. What that means is that the sky was very bright and the landscape was a lot darker. So if I were to capture that in one single shot, I would risk either underexposing the landscape or overexposing the sky. And a great way of dealing with high dynamic range scenes like this is by shooting bracketed. The camera, or in this case the drone, will then quickly and automatically take three or five photos, each with a stop of exposure difference between them. That way you'll either have one photo where the exposure is correct, or you can combine all these photos into one image with lots and lots of dynamic range. Now, the problem with bracketing is that if you've been out shooting for, I don't know, the entire day, and you've taken hundreds or thousands of photos, it can be a bit of a pain to try and figure out which three or five photos belong together. But with Luminar Neo, it now actually becomes incredibly easy and fast to do that. If we look here, there is this very clever HDR merge tool. I can just select all of these photos from an entire day of shooting, drag and drop them into the HDR merge tool, and then select batch HDR. Then the tool automatically groups all the photos that belong together, and it's that easy. If I hit continue, Luminar will start merging all these photos together into HDR images ready to be edited. So basically bracketing and dealing with bracketed images has now become effortless. I really love seeing how the people at Skylum are constantly working to make Luminar Neo better and better. They really listen to what us photographers want and need and then try to integrate that into their software. And I will honestly say that I think with the release of this new update, Luminar Neo has probably become the best all-in-one editing solution for most photographers. Above all, it's actually even cheaper than Adobe's photography plan. Especially if you use the code STAN30 at checkout, you'll get another 30% off. So make sure you check out the link in the video description if you want to start editing your photos with Luminar Neo. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.